right, good evening, everyone. This is the City of Montpelier Development Review Board <coughs> meeting for Tuesday, January 21st, 2020. Uh, my name is Daniel Richardson. I serve as the chair of the board, and the other members from my right are Rob Goodwin, Kevin O'Connell, Michael Lazorchak, Meredith Crandall, staff, Kate McCarthy, Ryan Kane. All right, uh, first order of business is approval of the agenda. You all should have that in front of you. It's a very light agenda, no applications, but do I have any changes to the amend, uh, agenda or a motion to approve the agenda? <coughs> motion made. Motion by Kevin. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Rob. All those in favor of the agenda as printed, please raise your right hand. We have an agenda. There, uh, the only, well, w we will discuss, I think, in the latter part of the meeting, some of the issues that I would otherwise uh, reserve for the comments from the chair. Uh, I'll simply note that just before the meeting, we started having a discussion that it is unusual in a sort of collective history and memory uh, of this board to have such a light agenda for as long as we have. Uh, I believe our last meeting was the beginning of November. Yeah. Correct. Um, we did not have any applications in the second half of November. We did not have any applications in December. And we do not have any applications in January. Um, and uh, right now, Meredith, my understanding is that there are no items for the beginning of February. Correct. So the likely next actual substantive meeting where we'll be reviewing permits is going to be at the end of February. Yeah, and that's if we get an application. At this point, we don't have an application in for that meeting either. So it's just as possible that it could be March. Yeah. Um, okay. So, you know, that said, it's it's. I'll just simply note that I don't know. Um, we were speculating as to what that means, uh, but certainly, uh, we welcome applications from anyone who wishes to submit said applications. Where we have plenty of room on our agenda, as you can see. Uh, the other item of business moving along is the uh, review and approval of the November 4th, 2000, uh, I'm seeing already a typo that we need to correct, 2019 <laughs> minutes. Um, at the top, that 18 should be a 19. Thank you. Yep. Um, those present were myself, Kevin, Kate, Rob, uh, and we do have that quorum here. Um, so we have enough to approve. Any changes to the minutes? other than the correction of the 18 to 19 at the top. A motion to adopt the minutes. Mr. Chair, I move that we adopt the minutes with the change from 2018 to 2019. Okay, motion by Kate. Do I have a second of those eligible to vote? Second. Second by Kevin. Uh, all those eligible to vote on the minutes, please raise your right hand if you approve of them. And we have minutes adopted. Very good. Um, so that brings us to the status update on proposed revisions to design review regulations and overlay district boundary. Meredith? Uh, so I think just because we, I mean, we do have one member of the public here, we mm -hmm. may have additional viewing. I'm going to go and plug something into the laptop so okay. that people can see from elsewhere. And not to put any pressure on you, um, uh, uh, but, uh, <laughs> well, it, yeah, it, that <laughs> yeah. cuts to the chase. My name is Jenny Fulton. I'm a student in historic preservation at University of Vermont. Robert McCullough is one of my professors. Uh, I have an assignment to attend some public meetings to see what's going on. I'm aware uh, of the revisions to the design review regulations, and I'm, so I'm interested in following that process. Great. Great. Well, welcome and thank you for, for coming. And certainly, um, if given that you're our sole attendee, <laughs> if something should strike you, um, we will not sit on formality if you wish to participate. I mean, this is uh, unlike a permit application that we would have a bit more formal order of business. This is really more of an educational opportunity for us to meet as a board to gain some information about um, proposed revisions that are coming but aren't yet in our um, uh, bylaws that we will eventually have to administer so that we can do so in a semi-intelligent manner. And Mr. Chair, for the sake of, any, of, of anyone watching along tonight, we should probably note that this isn't a formal hearing on these regulations. 
this is, an, as you said, an educational opportunity for the Development Review Board. And I'm sure we will be hearing from Meredith when the formal hearing is going to take place and how people can participate in that. Right. And Meredith, that would be in front of um, both the Planning Commission, unless they've passed them out of the Planning Commission, and then eventually the City Council. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Correct. Um, so I think just with that lead in, um, the first thing I'm going to say is that the first big public hearing on these changes to the design review regulations as well as the um, overlay district boundaries is going to be January 27th at 5.30 p.m. in front of the Planning Commission here in City Council in the Council Chambers. Um, and I wanted to just brief everybody on where the status, you know, where the status is on this because we've been trying to keep everybody abreast of potential changes. Um, so since I was here last time on this matter, um, the, the Planning Commission made a few adjustments to the 15 pages, roughly 15 pages of draft new design review regulations. Um, but in large part, the, the themes, the plans are pretty much the same. Um, the Planning Commission sort of dialed back some of the requirements, um, made them a little less stringent in places, um, and had some, you know, some discussions about <coughs> where to go when it came to things that were a little more nebulous, like view sheds. Um, but in, in large part, they kept the main themes of the new proposed regulations the same so there's uh, <laughs> so there's we still have a lot more clarity on what the design review regulations are now there are a lot more detailed um, there are a lot more exemptions to design review um, for for exterior changes to buildings there are also um, eight different categories of changes that can be administratively approved so it's in the design review district technically it requires design review but the administrative officer the zoning administrator can make those approvals without something having to go through a hearing so they still need a permit but they don't need a hearing um, and th those are big changes those are going to make things easier simpler um, and and quicker for applicants which is a really I, I think a really strong benefit um, yes, Kate. I'll interject here. Um, no. I, I should have asked this at the very beginning, and maybe I should know it anyway. But just for the sake of anyone who might be starting from scratch, mm -hmm. I'm sure there are a lot of people watching from home. Um, can you tell me sort of where this, when this originated, what the impetus was for doing it, and what some of the main issues were that were identified as needing to be addressed? Yep, I can. I think back. some of this started before some members were even on the DRB. <laughs> yeah, I, I think so. I, I think we've, maybe I'm wrong. I think we did presentations, 7, 12 but. 12 p.m. Oops, can you? That's supposed to be off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's my kid's last minute bedtime morning. There you go. Um, oh, thank you. You were going to do all this anyway. Yeah, <laughs> I appreciate I, that. I was just sort of doing the big picture overview. Okay. I, it's also, I had this as needed. Mm -hmm. Um. So, all right. So this whole process started back in 2017, really even before that. Um, back when we had the big regulation, zoning regulation rewrite that took place in 2016, 2017, up through 2018, um, there were new design re review regulations proposed. There was a huge outcry about those. Um, both from the Historic Preservation Commission and other members of the public who didn't like how they were leading. So the Historic Preservation Commission was charged um, by the Planning Commission to do their own rewrite. So that started in September of 2017. Um, and the Historic Preservation Commission was really looking to um, clarify the regulations, make them um, I'm going to go to the next slide, actually. It just gives. Um, next one. Doo -doo -doo. These are all the additional input. But the big goals were 
to improve predictability and consistency of ap the applications, um, improve defensibility of decisions. So right now the design review regulations are really about three pages with very, you know, vague statements of what the design review committee is supposed to be looking at and, and what those regulations are in a lot of instances. There are some specifics with regard to signs, things like that, but in general, they're, they're pretty broad brush. No, there probably wasn't an analysis, but um, anecdotally, is there a sense that the appeals that have come from uh, zoning decisions, what percentage they've been the historic preservation? I mean, well, which is to say, I, I, I'm thinking, you know, part of the defensibility and the uh -huh. need for the change is, is because the standards may not meet sort of modern yeah. zoning law. Um, but as well, I think there have been a number of where we've seen appeals. They've Where the been DRB the, has seen appeals, yes. Right, <clears throat> to, to the environmental court. It's um, been... I mean, that's, those are before my time, so I don't know the numbers for that. Okay. Um, but that no. was definitely a, a concern. Okay. Um, as well as there being a history of um, applicants not agreeing with what the design review committee had said, and mm -hmm. then that coming here to the development review board, and the development review board <coughs> not necessarily having clear standards to judge a decision. Mm -hmm. Um and I think that the Historic Preservation Commission wanted to make sure that, you know, the, the purposes behind the design review regulations were really more clearly laid out, including um, details that came from um, the National Park Service Rehabilitation Standards, which is a you know, federal, federal requirement. Um, so anyway, there's lots of stuff here. Um, so another big goal was they, you know, they had the option of restricting the design review regulations to just historic, the historic district, just historic preservation. Um, but they really wanted to continue with it being a design review district, um, so that that means it applies not just to historic buildings, but also to new construction. Um, and then one of the other big purposes here was to make sure that the new design review regulations clearly meet um, the, sorry, my brains, um, la, 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 la. for some reason I can't come up with what CLG means, even though I talk about it all the time. Certified local Thank government. Thank you. Certified <laughs> local government. <laughs> I think the caffeine is wearing off. Um, certifi certified local government standards. So <coughs> this is a contract that the city has with um, the you know, state on how we treat historic buildings that opens up the, the city to getting grant funding. There's a, whole, there's a whole bunch of benefits to being a CLG community. Um, and then also you know, making sure that the design standards are a little more flexible. There's, there's some places in the, the draft where it looks like when, when you read it it may seem really strict but in actuality we're making because it's become it's becoming more clear um you're going to have less room for a committee to just impose its own ideas on things um and and it, it, it's just like i said earlier more more predictable um, more predictable more transparent um, so just back in time a little bit for the drafting process like I said it started in 2017 the Historic Preservation Commission went through a lot of public input consulting <coughs> with outside parties reviewing design review regulations from all over the state all over the country um, and then they spent a large part of 20, 2018 and a good part of 2019 drafting the regulations um, with various public meetings and additional public input. Um, so, you know, at this point, it's gone to the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission has had multiple meetings, some in conjunction with Historic Preservation Commission, some with design review members present, um, to go back and forth and debating the actual terms in the regulations. And then once the Planning Commission was happy with those terms, 
they went on to the next step that the Historic Preservation Commission really couldn't lead on and um, revised the district map. So this is something that is going to, this is where where individuals really start to, to figure out how this is gonna affect them. Um, it's kind of hard to see on the 11 by 17, so I'm gonna zoom in on here. Um, so this black line that you can see on the map, and you all have a copy of it, right. surrounds the current design review district. This is the current design review district boundary. The stripes. No, not the red stripes, the black oh, line. The black line, the is, black the line is the current. Gotcha. The red diagonal stripes are where we're gonna move the boundary to. So here you have parcels, and in some cases, parts of parcels that are going to be brought into the design review district. Um, a lot of what the <coughs> planning commission is doing is cleaning up lines so that you don't have just part of a parcel that's in the design review district. You have the whole parcel. Or you don't have just part of a neighborhood. So you're all familiar with how within each zoning district there are distinct neighborhoods. With the current outline the current design review district boundary sometimes just four or five or six parcels in a neighborhood is going to be within the district so the planning commission has tried to think critically about each of those neighborhoods and say well should we have the entire neighborhood in or should we have the entire neighborhood out they want to have some level of parity of equity going on here so that you don't have just a few parcels within a whole neighborhood that's in the design review district um, in this neighborhood, the 10 4, which I, it's way over on the side as to what it's called. So that's the Redstone North neighborhood. Um, everything here that was out, it's out right now, that we're pulling in, is actually part of the national, um, is part of the national district, the National Historic Register District. So it really makes sense to try and have our design review district overlap with the historic district, which is a whole separate matter. Um, <coughs> but one reason that makes a lot of sense is that if you have a building that is um, on this national or the state register of historic places, and it is being, um, there's a plan to have it be demolished, you have a higher standard of review. We're all familiar with that, I think. Um, but Right now, these parcels aren't subject to design review. So you're not having design review people who might have more of a historic preservation background, potentially. I know of at least one person on the current design review committee who's also on the Historic Preservation Commission. Um, they're, they're getting skipped over in the review process for demolition of these historic buildings. It doesn't automatically go to design review unless it's in the design overlay district. So that's one of the one of the rationales for these changes. Um, and so right here, you can see where the black line there, they're gonna, they're proposing bumping these parcels out of the design review district because these are just a few little houses in a separate neighborhood. It, it's not in the historic district, they aren't finding any reason to bring in the whole rest of the neighborhood so it seemed to make more sense to just pop those neighborhood those those parcels out um another interesting bit is here along berry street um so you had one side of berry street that's currently in design review district the whole other side of berry street even though it's the same neighborhood right now is not in the design review district so they're proposing to pull it back in and have it come over the entire neighborhood and both sides of the street. Um, does anybody have any questions right now? I mean, it's, there's, there's lots of, I could I could talk about every single change, but that's also something that's gonna happen at the meeting on the 27th yeah. with well, people well, who have a lot more understanding of why they made the decisions they did. Uh, Meredith, how far along are they in the process? I mean, if you were gonna assign some kind of percentage to three quarters of the way down there. Uh, the, the planning commission process? Yeah. Um, this is not, this is the very first 
public input okay. hearing. So at this point, the meeting on the 27th is there the, the first really broad, let's get all the rest of the players to the table at the public, you know, at the, at the planning commission. They've had multiple hearings, but there hasn't been a lot of public input. So for this hearing, um, we've actually sent physical notice to every single property owner who has a, who owns property that is currently within the design review district or is proposed to be added to the design review district. Um, and so they've gotten a special letter that tells them which property we're talking about, if it's in, is going to stay in, if it's in, is going to be booted out, or if it's out and it's going to come in, plus a copy of the map, plus a copy of the regulations. So we're hoping that the meeting on the 27th is going to have a lot of input. Um, we've started getting some of that input in writing um, for people who won't be able to make the meeting and have called in. but. Hopefully, a lot of people will turn out at the meeting. And then, depending on that public input, there may be a sort of retrenching, re-meeting between Planning Commission and Historic Preservation Commission, just to see see what the what the barometer is saying, and whether or not there needs to be big changes or just small changes to then go forward. So then, the Planning Commission will still have to have, I think, at least one, maybe two more public hearings after that before they even have a vote on whether or not it goes forward to city council and city council definitely has to have at least two public hearings before they can adopt something is my understanding yes kate i'm kind of curious if you know what's happening up by the college of fine arts um it look you said that there was an effort to bring into the design review district anything that's in the same neighborhood for consistency and yet this looks like something drawn based on a parcel line? Yep, so my understanding um, is that because this particular separate, you know, outlier of the design review district was originally drawn to encompass the property owned by the college, um, the Planning Commission is proposing removing those parcels that are no longer owned by the college from the design review district has the buildings the types of buildings that are on those parcels changed since the college no longer has ownership or do they continue to comprise part of the character and district um ownership and form are kind of two different things yep i i am i spot. am i i am passing on to you what i know okay I was not at every single planning commission meeting about this. Um, so, you know, this is, hold on, let me zoom in and see if I can see something. So, sometimes you can see the little white lines that designate a different neighborhood. Mm -hmm. no, um, so right, right here, here oh, I think this parcel is technically, a, I mean, it's a different zoning district. You can see how it's purple. Yeah. instead of the yellow yeah. same with these yellow ones sure. um yeah. sorry that's orange underneath the red stripes yeah. so because these are also different technical neighborhoods mm -hmm. and districts mm -hmm. um i think that that's reasoning behind that one it may mm -hmm. also be this, this one that makes sense um i'm wondering about that you one. know this the big one yeah um, is, that, is that a hill? The, the big is, one, it, the big one is is a tricky one because it's very strange to have a single parcel have multiple zoning districts over it. Hmm. Um, <laughs> that is something they typically try. And this actually, huh? They've drawn this line incorrectly. Um, there was a change to the zoning map. So this district line right here, this actually now goes straight across and down. This okay. little bit here has been rezoned. Right. to match riverfront okay. um but uh, you know this is this parcel because there's actually a parcel line here mm -hmm. the parcel like i always call it a penguin um i believe is you know this is what the vermont college of fine arts is talking about selling off okay. there's no right now there's no buildings on here at all okay um really it's sort of more in my mind it, it it is more similar to Sabin's Pasture, hmm. um, but it's been owned by the college. Um, okay. So I think that because if there's development on there, it's going to be new development. But you know, it's it's planning commission's thought process. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Depending what happens on the 27th and other public hearings, mm -hmm. these lines may all change. Yeah. 
And I mean, considering it's new development, that might be an argument for having it within the design review. Yeah, yeah. it's it's a especially I'm because sure it's been an ongoing conversation. It, it's an yeah, and that's what that's what the twenty seventh is all about is broadening that conversation. Okay. Thanks for taking that question on the fly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Any other? When when did that zoning change happen? When the river front line. Um, so uh, I can't remember the exact date. So, um, that was one of the interim changes that then became um, fully adopted. I think that was part of the um, September 25th adoption that took effect yeah. in October. I think that was part of that. And there were several public hearings at Planning Commission and City Council about it. So just so I understand the process, Meredith, mm -hmm. um, these decisions, because they always involve decisions and where to draw the lines and where not to draw the lines, this has been driven by both the Planning Commission as well as the historic preservation people? Um, when it comes to where the district lines are drawn, that has been much less driven by the Historic Preservation Commission. Okay. Um, that has been more planning commission at this point in time and trying to, um, as with the design review regulations, make things more transparent and clearer, easier to follow, and, you know, a little more parity. Okay. Um, this is the, their first stab at it. You know, they didn't, I, I don't think, at this point, they really don't feel like they want to make you know, huge changes mm -hmm. to the design review overlay mm -hmm. district. They're trying to tweak it where it seems to make sense right now. Right. Um, but it's their version of what makes sense. How it morphs from here forward, I don't know. Right. At all. So, I mean, there's a few properties that are going to experience the design control um, regulations for the first time. Yep. There's a few properties, fewer properties, I would say, overall, that are going to leave. The design that's control. the proposal and the proposal yep. yeah no I, I sorry okay just then maybe we it might make sense unless anybody has any questions to sort of move on to the um, the actual regulations overview the PowerPoint yeah if, okay. you're, I, if you're ready yeah I mean it's I think we've talked about a lot of it um, You know, I can go into the core changes. I'm not sure if you think that's helpful at this point. This same presentation, most of the same presentation is going to be presented on the 27th. Um, <coughs> do, I mean, this... Well, I think, I think for our purposes, I mean, what I'd really like to know is under the changes that are being proposed, mm -hmm. how many applications are likely to be, or what types of applications are likely to come before the DRB? Yep. Um, I think that so right now if something goes through the design review committee that is a big project that then has to come before the DRB you usually get a copy of their recommendation form right right which is one page maybe one in a back with some pair you know a few sentences of recommendations on it the the way this is gonna work to be able to get similar recommendations and to have the, the kind of detailed analysis that is going to be required a little bit more is I think that we're going to have to have more different kinds of recommendation forms. So right now there's one for signs, there's one for everything else. Mm -hmm. With the new system, you're going to have, you know, the question of is it is it a project that involves a historic building? Is it just a project that's new development? Um, depending on that so the answer to that question you're gonna have different standards that apply right um, and so we're gonna have to have more a variety of forms they're gonna be more detailed um, it might be that there is a sort of design review committee level shorter staff report mm -hmm. that then just gets folded into your staff report to go through everything um, we're, we're kind of playing with the process not the process but the what the what the paper is going to look like in that process um 
So there might be a little bit more for you to look at when a design review matter comes before you, even just to understand what was talked about previously. And especially if it's something where the design review committee recommendations are being appealed to you. Right. I mean, we're still going to sit in appellate review effectively of the design review committee's exactly decisions oh, or or the zoning administrator's decisions because or, there will be the opportunity for zoning administrators to approve or disapprove disapprove things before they even go to the design review committee um and so there, is demolition still going to be under our wheelhouse or is this demolition will st i mean currently demolition in the design review district, the design review committee gets the first cut okay. at it. Yeah. Um, that will still be uh, under these changes. That Those will still changes. still come to the development review board. Um, I am going to give you a little heads up that the historic preservation commission is playing around with a brand new demolition provision that we've they've just started looking at that. Um, that may not come move anywhere or it may take you know a year or two okay so who knows but that's that is something that's being worked on right but that's not outside of this process process but okay. um, um actually i have one very specific question yeah. and i was just in looking through some of these exempt developments mm -hmm. and i'm just curious this has absolutely nothing to do with the drb it's only because i've gone through this process i think um I noticed that the defined that doing uh, particularly under subsection F it has, says in bold alterations that involve changes to materials composition type or appearance of a feature the removal of distinctive materials or alterations of features spaces or spatial relationships that characterize property and not exempt activities so I've seen this problem I've, I've run into it myself where you are using where you have a building with historic material so the porch roof that's in hammered tin mm -hmm. that's now corroded and needs to be replaced but of course nobody does roof in hammered tin anymore it's rubber membrane mm -hmm. so you're replacing one type of material with another because that type of material isn't used otherwise it would it would appear the exact same from the street a black looking roof you're not changing the spatial features but looking at the definition of what's in kind and alterations of materials that seems to to be a change such that it would require a permit and review by the correct okay correct because you're not it is not the same material right um So there's so in that case it would you'd have to fill out an actual application mm -hmm. and likely go before the DRC. Correct. Okay. And it's you know the thing to keep in mind is that's what happens right now. Mm. If you're if you're changing materials in the design review overlay district right now, if you're going from metal to rubber, you're going from shingle to metal roofing you go before the design review committee even if it even if it looks the same if the material is actually different we're sending people to the design review committee well i, I understand like if you replace um uh you know if you have you know m like uh, uh slate shingles and you replace them with asphalt shingles mm -hmm. even if they quote unquote look the same but what i'm talking about is a little bit more narrowly and i, I do i know that the prior administrative officers have interpreted it differently where if a material is not available in the same manner which is to say if if for example the hammer tin example even if i wanted to replace a roof with hammer tin i couldn't because it's just not available commercially the way it was 110 years ago um right and, and so at least in the past i have seen administrative permits or or even determinations by the administrative officer saying well you know it's not it's it's you're basically it's a kind of blurred in kind material because it's the the original materials not available and this is the closest alternative to it it was like an asbestos tile mm -hmm. if an asbestos tile because they don't make them anymore 
isn't available and you have another tile that looks similar, the question is, does that then require a permit? And I understand what your answer is and I understand what this new <laughs> answer is. Um, so but I just being, to make sure being I a zoning it. administrator with a legal background who is told to read the regulations yep. exactly as written, um, my decision would be to say, yes, it needs to go to design review, not necessarily because design review is going to say you can't do this, but because it's design review based on the qualifications to be on that committee are going to be the ones with the best resources to advise that applicant as to how best to make that change and yet still have it fit within the design review overlay district and be reflective of the historic right. period no. of the building or whatever. So, you know, the zoning administrator in my mind isn't supposed to make that judgment call. It's supposed to get the re recommendation from the design review committee because that's what they're there for. They're the experts. Okay. No, if that's the way it's been going, um, too, I'm not gonna. Uh, I mean, you can come. You can you can come to the to the meeting. Yeah. No. 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 Your, well, your, I just I wanted know, I wanted opinion. to make sure I wanted to just and it, like I said, it was much more down in the weeds and an informal question mm -hmm. of whether that was going to open up a new set of applications that are existing. But what you're saying is basically the way you've been enforcing them, they already have been coming into that system. Yep. So we we just haven't had that many of those yeah I mean there's there's there is a there is a time when something is going you know up on a roof nobody's gonna see it you literally cannot see it and there's there's nothing especially if it is also then associated with mm -hmm. um, you know a building that is typically exempt from a lot of zoning regulations that's one thing mm -hmm. roofing material usually is very you know, the design review committee wants to see that um, and it can be pretty integral to especially if it's integral to the, the historic if it's noted on some something on the National Register it's gonna go to design review committee mm -hmm. okay which I'm assuming a tin, tin roof would be <laughs> None. if it's a if it's on the National Register of historic places and it has a tin roof I bet the tin roof is noted okay <laughs> Um, okay. Um, so I don't know if you want to talk more about details or if you want to move on. No, I just, had that, I just had that one observation on that one okay. question. Um, but, uh, you know, I think, you know, overall it looks as if, and I only glanced through these, but it does look like they're, they're trying to put some more detail onto the historic preservation. Yeah, and there was there was also a lot of discussion with design review committee, current design review committee members to get a sense of if these regulations would actually change outcomes for people who actually come to the committee. And in large part, the sense was the new regulations are actually reflective of the way decisions happen already. Mm -hmm. um, but gives gives especially you know new members or the development review board a basis to make those decisions well also I mean you know just even looking at things like rhythm of historic buildings mm -hmm. you know that's something I think has always been part of the DRC's concern um, and it just never has been codified into yep. a particular rule so no I, I I don't have a I don't have any issues with any of these things <laughs> I just was curious it, and I, I think he answered the question anybody else have any other questions about Okay. I'll do. Um, I also agree that codifying standards is very important and being able to read something and then determine whether or not you're adhering to that standard is important for appeals, but also way before that oh, yeah. for applicants. Um, I also know that when it comes to creating the way that a building feels and looks and masses and, and like it, it, it can be hard to capture in words. So I see that you're creating a Montpelier guidelines for to be determined. <laughs> that sounds like it's going to be more visual yep. to help us know what rhythm is and fenestration and all that. Exactly. So there are so currently guidelines, mm -hmm. um, the Montpelier streetscapes, mm -hmm. that are you know part part of the decision making process. But mm -hmm. these were put They're together a mm -hmm. long time ago. Yeah, we used those um, at our last 
meeting together when we were looking at appropriate signage on, right. on Main Street. Right. So I guess my question is, um, you've got a lot of property owners who are going to bring this document on the 27th and maybe be a little intimidated by some of like by words like proportion and rhythm and and um, fenestration. Mm -hmm. So will those pictures be available for the public to review by the 27th to inform the discussion and make all these concepts, even though the words are are more solid? You mean the, the guidelines? The, yeah. The new are guidelines. Those be ready? The 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 new guidelines are something that is going to require a whole new, at least one, maybe two series of grants okay. um, to develop new guidelines. Mm -hmm. And that's something that is on the Historic Preservation Commission's plan for the new city um, city plan mm -hmm. um, for their, their new chapter on that. But it didn't make a lot of sense to invent, invest all that time and money if, if they might change. the design review regulations mm -hmm. right. get have large changes between sure. now and adoption. Yeah. Okay. I'm just trying to think of the best way to present it to the public so that the words, which do provide clarity, don't also cause confusion absent a visual that helps people lock it in their yeah. heads. And, so and maybe, maybe you're thinking about that for the public meeting already. Yep, no, that's, that's something, I mean, that's something that can be, I, I honestly, off the top of my head, don't know if that is in the current streetscapes at all. I can't remember. Mm. No, but um, I, I, I mean, even just to demystify the terms is what I'm getting at. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think Kate's correct in that, and it may be just informal feedback, mm -hmm. which is when mm -hmm. this presentation mm -hmm. goes forward, if you can show a picture, whether it's in Montpelier or not, but that explifies the difference between good rhythm and bad rhythm. Yeah, I think that's um, a good idea. Yeah. And I can I can recommend. A wonderful website called McMansion Hell, um, <laughs> done by Kate Wagner. That is a really incredible uh, collection of bad architectural <laughs> choices. Um, that that I think illustrates it's it's you know it's a classic picture with a thousand words kind of thing. You only have to see the mismatched windows or the stuck on architectural features once to to get it to understand what these what these protect or what these prevent yeah no, that's a good idea thanks dan that that is right how you characterized what i was getting at is the idea of the informal feedback mm -hmm. to help facilitate the meeting and make yeah. these concepts less scary when the public comes in no, i think that's a good idea i'll um I know the it's planning work. director has been well. The planning director has been working on that presentation, on morphing this presentation into something for the twenty seventh, and mm -hmm. so I will bring that up with him to see if he's even started on that. Yeah, some visual idea. For just mm -hmm. rhythm um, is this, windows yep. are this, height means this, and some of that may be able to come out of existing materials that we have in the city. Mm -hmm. But I think that's yeah. a good idea. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I think it'll help the meeting. I sometimes get lost in the big picture of how to present the whole thing and totally. didn't think about that yeah and i but often get lost in words rather than pictures because i'm wordy in my head and in my speech um but pictures matter yeah good anybody else have any other questions okay thanks meredith awesome. this has thank been you really very much that was great yeah. 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 and if anybody wants copies of presentations or anything, let me know. If you aren't going to keep your paper copies of things, you can give them back to me because we'll use them on the 27th. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Hmm? Very good. Okay. Next item of business is the uh, upcoming board member changes. There's a couple of things going on, and I think it's just worth talking through. <laughs> um, so as I think most of you know, if not, that um, I am seeking uh, a city council position um, and I'm actually applying for the open vacancy, uh, which could be as early as this coming Thursday. So I don't know if that will happen or not. Obviously, if it doesn't, I'm still here, but and I am running for city council and if I am successful, um, then I would step down, obviously, as, as chair. I'm not planning on stepping down before said election um, or appointment just simply because I love this board and all the work we do when we actually have work to do. Um, but, um, and I'm not running for city council to escape any of you. Um, in fact, the opposite, but um, 
but there will be that change. And as we all see, we're down already a member. We're down an alternate. Um, and then I talked, um, you know, Kate, I, you were talking about taking a, a short leave of absence, um, uh, family leave uh, from the from the board. That's going to leave us a slight deficit uh, again. And then Ryan, we talked. You're you're coming up for renewal, but my understanding is that you will I not. Expect that I will not be seeking to to renew my term on the board. So, um, so that leaves us, I think, with, with some a serious issue of making sure that we have enough people to fill in the spaces. I would encourage you to. You know, encourage others uh, to do their civic duty to step up and serve on the board um, because of all the fun we have and the winter's off apparently um, and you know I think so so if we look at this I mean you know Kate's absence will be temporary um, but Ryan if I'm successful myself the open seat that's three plus the alternate that's four out of nine Positions. I think we we need to be uh, very thoughtful about getting either people who've served to come back because um, some of the people who have served in the past are interested in coming back, uh, as well as getting new people on board. Because I think you know one of the the really good parts of the board that in the past two years has been the new infusion of uh, people serving. It's been a great opportunity, uh, not only for you, but I think as a board, we've been a better board because we've had new ideas, new perspectives. So certainly, if you can encourage that, it's something to keep on our agenda. Any questions? All right. No, I, I would just add that my intended leave period um, is that tonight, it was going, my, my last meeting before taking leave was going to be our next meeting, which we don't have. Uh, so it's tonight. Um, and I intend to return May 4th, assuming that everything goes well. Um, and that way I can be back soon. <laughs> if that can't happen, I'll, I'll let you know. Um, Good. Um, so obviously something to think about. Um, I know that the, the city manager's office sends out a uh, board and committee's vacancy uh, newsletter mm -hmm. on a regular basis. And I'm not sure, has this... Have, have has the board been in, included in that? Yeah. Meredith? Yep. It and it's been yeah. It's on front porch forum. It's on Facebook. It's through the city manager's you know weekly report. Okay. Um, so it's been, and it, we, we've we've covered that area. Yeah. We've we've been we've been broadcasting, and they just recently I think also did another posting in the um, local newspapers. No, it's funny because there's times when there's really a lot of of. Uh, uh, drive on people's part to want to be a part of this board and then we go through these deficit periods where it's like you know can we find somebody who's still breathing you know, <laughs> you know pulse your Montpelier <laughs> residence let's go <laughs> let's, we can do better you know but better. it's cyclical you know yeah and, and we're, I, I agree has that always been the case on the board I've yeah. only been doing it for like six years but I, yes yeah I, 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 I've stable. noticed I've noticed those ups and downs and um yeah, I think, you know, in part, I think it's a testament, and I don't want to do any back padding, but I think we should as a board. In part, I think because we've been working so well together, it doesn't create ripples. You know, people often pay attention to boards that aren't functioning well, public boards particularly, and, you know, they start to step up because they feel like it's going off the rails, and they, you know, everybody wants to step, you know, that often gets people riled up and that's when I've seen when we've had right. controversial decisions that's when mm -hmm. or when there's been controversial issues that's when people have often wanted to sort of step forward mm -hmm. um, that's correct and I think yeah. in part because we've run a pretty smooth ship of state as it were um, which I think is, is a credit to everyone here uh, particularly Meredith um, yeah. to make sure that this process has gone well people think oh well we don't have to think about it because it just runs right. um, so <clears throat> don't let them be complacent. Get well for our television audience. You know, take a look, see what we're all about. Yeah, watch some of our back episodes. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. <laughs> Look at season season <laughs> season five was <laughs> great. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, our next regularly scheduled meeting is February 18th, 2020. There are no applications for the third, so our third meeting on which we would normally have on the first two Monday of the month is canceled. Um, oh, I just a little note, the February 18th meeting is a Tuesday. That didn't get put in Oh, here. sorry, that's right. It's the day after President's yep. Day. So okay. it is actually a tu it's Tuesday, February 18th. Um, and that's a tentative schedule because as of right now, we do not have any applications for that meeting. And obviously, if there are none forthcoming, we will likely not meet um, since we've had this opportunity to sort of get caught up on some of these changes. And I don't expect any other substantial changes to come between now and next month. Nope. All right. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion by Ryan. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Kate. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. We are adjourned. Thank you.